Hello, welcome to part 17 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 81st question. A physical therapist is examining a patient who presents with unilateral lower extremity pain upon walking, which is relieved by rest. Which of the following findings reported by patient will help the physical therapist to confirm a diagnosis of independent chlorication? Option A. Pain relief upon forward bending or sitting. Option B. Pain relief upon standing. Option C. Cramping pain that occurs at predictable distance walked. Option D. Numbness and tingling that occurs at predictable distance walked. And the answer is... Option A. Pain relief upon forward bending or sitting. Explanation to this question is... Pain relief upon forward bending or sitting and pain relief upon standing are more diagnostic for lumbar origin of pain. Regarding cramping pain that occurs at a predictable distance walk, common presentation and clinical manifestation of pain caused by vascular limitation is cramping in nature and occurs in predictable excision levels. Numbness and tingling that occurs at predictable distance walked are more in line with the neurological cause of pain rather than a vascular cause. Now let's move to our 82nd question. Low back pain is frequently caused by lumbar disc disease, which is involved by aging and degenerative cassite. What is the nomenclature specific to lumbar disc disease that involves breaking of disc fragments from the nucleus pulposus? Option A. Disc bulge. Option B. Disc protrusion. Option C. Disc sequestration. Option D. Disc excretion. And the answer is Option C. Disc sequestration. Explanation to this question is Disc sequestration is the separation of disc fragment from the nucleus pulposus. In a disc bulge, an annulus fibers are intact. Protrusion of disc involves localized bulging of the disc with damaged annulus fibers. Disc exclusion involves an extended bulge with destroyed annulus fibers. The disc is intact. Now let's move to our 83rd question. You are performing an evaluation of an inpatient that has congenital dysplasia of the right hip. The patient previously had limitation in specific range of motions as a result of congenital dysplasia. Which of the following would show the greatest limitation in movement for this patient? Option A. Hip flexion. Option B. Hip adduction. Option C. Hip abduction. Option D. Hip rotation. And the answer is... Option C. Hip abduction. Explanation to this question is, congenital dysplasia of the hip is a congenital orthopedic defect in which the head of femur does not articulate with the acetabulum because of the abnormal shallowness of the acetabulum. As a result, a patient with congenital dysplasia would show a limitation in hip abduction. Treatment consists of maintaining continuous abduction of thigh so that the head of femur passes into the center of the shallow cavity, causing it to be deepened. Now let's move to our 84th question. Cryotherapy has the main effect of cooling the tissues. Although the technique of using ice or cold application for treatment differs, the physiological response to cryotherapy are consistent. The following are the physiological response to the cold therapy during the first 15 to 20 minutes of cold exposure except Option A. Decreased tissue stiffness Option B. Decreased circulation Option C. Decreased atherogenic muscle inhibition Option D. Decreased muscle spasm And the answer is Option A. Decreased tissue stiffness Explanation to this question is Cold therapy increases tissue stiffness Cold therapy may also cause decreased temperature, tissue damage, increased or decreased inflammation, increased muscle spasm, and lower metabolism. Now let's move to our 85th question. You are in a neurology class studying abnormal and normal reflexes. You are specifically concerned with abnormal reflex asymmetric tonic neck reflex or ATNR. The integration level for this reflex is brainstem. The stimulus would be for the therapist to turn the head to one side. Which of the following would be the correct response to stimulus of turning the head to one side? Option A. Upper extremity extension and lower extremity flexion. Option B. Upper extremity flexion and lower extremity extension. 
ऑप्शन डी विट्रोवल ऑफ लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी फ्रॉम द स्टिमुलस ऑप्शन डी आर्म और लेग एक्सटेंशन ऑन द साइड दैट द हेड इज टर्न फ्लेक्शन ऑन द ऑपोजिट साइड एंड द आंसर इज Option D, arm or leg extension on the side that the head is turned. Flexion on the opposite side. Explanation to this question is: In the asymmetric neck tonic reflex, the correct response would be arm or leg extension on the side that the head is turned and arm or leg flexion on the opposite side. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.